Hi, this is Andrew, and I'm Janet, and we're going to be talking today about face syndrome. And you're watching Go Terran TV. Hey everybody, welcome to GoTerran TV today. It's episode number 413, and uh, as you can see side by side, we're welcoming for the very first time Andrew and Janet uh, from the greater Atlanta area. Guys, how are you doing today? We're great, Taryn. How are you? Good, Very good. Good, good, good. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming on. Um, now, for the folks watching, Jan and Andrew have been just tremendous, awesome clients of mine for several years. They were referred to me by, uh, of course, uh, Kathy from... Uh, uh, up there in Duluth. So, um, you know, we've been doing a great job working together. It's been just tremendous working with you guys. And uh, so, obviously, health and fitness and wellness is very important to you. Um, but today, I believe we're going to be talking about the face syndrome. So, um, Janet, I'll ask you to start us off. If you could please tell everybody um, a little bit first, let's talk about the uh, face syndrome itself. What is it? And tell everybody out there if they haven't heard about it, please. Face syndrome is a medical condition that uh, uh, that's a syndrome, and it comprises the um, different presentations of P, H, A, C, and E. So P stands for posterior fossa malformation, which are anomalies in the back of the brain. H is hemangioma, which is a non-cancerous tumor or a benign tumor um, that typically grows around the face for face patients. A are vascular anomalies, uh, C are cardiac anomalies, and E are, are I, I anomalies. And some people who have stands for cleft sternum, which is the breast, uh, a, a problem with the breastbone um, on their chest. Okay. All right. That's a good uh, intro to it. And, you know, just uh, first and foremost, uh, before I met you all, I hadn't heard of it. I understand this is a uh, pretty uncommon and very uh, recent um, uh, syndrome uh, within, like, what, maybe the last 20 years or so. Is that correct? It was diagnosed in uh, 90, 1996. 1996 by a doctor named uh, Alana Frieden in California. Okay, okay. And uh, so, uh, Andrew, let me ask you, um, you know, you all have a beautiful daughter and uh, her, um, you know, just known her as long as I've known you, obviously, and um, she's, I believe, 10 years old now. And um, the reason why we're talking about that is because she was diagnosed uh, as an infant with that syndrome. Is that correct? Yeah, so the first three months for, uh, for our daughter was interesting. We, um, she had a, um, a big growth on her eye and her eye was swollen shut and we just thought it was a um, uh, some type of uh, birthmark or something, and so our doctor told us to go to the hospital and get an MRI. We just didn't think anything of it. We just thought she might need some plastic surgery or something just to reduce the swelling or take the um, the uh, bulk out of her eye. And um, needless to say, it was a pretty uh, big big day for us. So they did the um, the MRI of her as when she was three months old. This was December, and this was over Christmas, December twenty fifth, two thousand five. Yeah. December 25th, 2005, and they um, came back, and they kind of had a, some puzzling looks on their faces when they came back to talk to us, and they told us that our daughter has, um, I think the exact words were, she has uh, uh, angiomas on her brain, mm -hmm. and it doesn't look good, and but very, very interesting conversation, and they actually asked if they wanted us to talk to a chaplain, because they were completely surprised by what they found when they looked at her inside of her head on the MRI. Mm -hmm. So it was a very big day for us and it was very, it was very, um, scary. It was very scary. One of the uh, radiologists there, we were lucky, he actually saw a presentation of face syndrome before. So he actually diagnosed it at that point in time. And we were lucky that we were at a major hospital in a major city who has specialties that understand rare syndromes, and so she was diagnosed that day. I, um, we were, didn't know which way was up at that point, and I asked, uh, "Can we leave now?" <laughs> and we didn't leave, obviously, we didn't leave for three days. Right. We we were in the hospital for three days, getting all sorts of tests done, and we um, finally got a plan of treatment. So after the third day, Rachel was discharged, and we went home, and we uh, learned 
had some, were going to be 200, two to 250 people were diagnosed with at that point in time in, in 2005. Right. So at the time, the face syndrome had only been understood for about, for not even 10 years. Oh, wow. And so even our pediatrician had never heard of it before. So it was something that there wasn't a whole lot of information on the internet about. Mm -hmm. um, we were lucky that we found a few families online through some, you know, online forum. And I think at the time, maybe we, we found four or five or six families whose kids also had face syndrome. And we started talking with them and sharing information. In addition to being lucky enough to have some doctors here in Atlanta that um, did this. Wow. It, was a, it was a very, very memorable day for us, and we, we still, you know, it's, it, was, um, it was not a good day, but, you know, since then, we, we've, we've managed 10 years of what it looks like to have face syndrome with our daughter, and every presentation is different. There's, there's, there's kids all over the spectrum of what kind of care they need, what kind of symptoms they present. Our daughter has... Um, a, a, a different presentation than other face patients. A lot of face patients have cardiac issues. We, we, we know Rachel has many face friends. Our daughter has many face friends that um, they had open heart surgery literally after they were having open heart surgery, and that's pretty major. Uh, Rachel uh, has to manage headaches, and the first headache that we know she got or the first major migraine she got we I was with her and we were at a, a tile store looking for tile for one of uh, for a property and she just kept on crying and I just thought she was just being a little difficult and she didn't want to be there so mm. kept on crying and I was just picking her up she was three she was three years old oh wow and, and she would cry on and off and she would just go putting a limp on my shoulder I guess because she was falling asleep and maybe just unhappy mm -hmm. And then we, we leave the store because she's just not happy. I put her in the car and I say, you know, okay, Rachel, let's go. Uh, get, in your, um, get in your booster. Get in your car seat because usually she was at the age where she would just climb in the car seat herself and I would buckle her in. Mm -hmm. And then she said, Daddy, I can't. And what do you mean you can't? And we um, – I started to watch her, and, and her whole left side of her body was limp. She couldn't move the left side of her oh, body. Wow. wow. And this is when she was three years old, and mm. she um, couldn't climb up. She couldn't walk, and she said, Daddy, I feel really clumsy. Mm. And I told her, lift your left hand. You know, stop playing around. Lift your left hand right now. Mm -hmm. Could not do it. Mm. And, and then all, all that came in my head was, oh, oh my God, she's having a stroke. Oh. Which is one of the um – Risks of kids with face syndrome, especially, well, those that have the vascular anomalies, and that's something that, that our daughter has, is she has a variety of, of um, arteries that are either missing or not formed properly in mm -hmm. between her neck and her brain. And so one of the risks is stroke. And so when she gets a migraine, sometimes it actually looks like she's having a stroke. So the, mm -hmm. the typical presentation of veins and arteries in your head, they're, they're supposed to be straight lines, mm -hmm. the same thickness. But our daughter's veins and arteries in her, in, her, in her head, they're curvy, they get thick, they get thin. <clears throat> and so if one of those thin parts gets too thin, the blood will actually stop moving. And so that could be very dangerous. So that day, I, uh, I, I said, oh, my God. And I, 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 I literally dialed 911 in the parking lot. Yeah. Ambulance came. Mm. And, um, and it, was the, it was the longest 10 minutes of my life, five, five or 10 minutes of my life waiting for the ambulance to come. Put her in the ambulance. We took her to Children's Hospital, and that was our first official visit to the hospital for what we later learned was a, a migraine that is just so severe. They call it a, it's beyond a migraine. They call it a neurological event, and it presents itself as it looks like a stroke. Um, our daughter goes borderline in and out of consciousness. She uh, can't speak. She she um, she slurs her words. She can't communicate. And it's just, it's just, as a parent, it's just horrible to, to watch. Uh, and, and so since for the last, our, our daughter is 10 now, and mm -hmm. so for the last seven years, we've had to manage uh, multiple visits to the ER for these, for these horrible debilitating migraines. Mm, wow, 
that's something. And so when that happened, uh, you know, when she was three years old uh, for the first occurrence, uh, I'll ask this to Janet. Uh, overall, what were the uh, first few years like, um, if you had to describe, you know, in addition to that, what you guys were going through? Um, when she was born, and most face families, the first few years or so is um, treatment for the hemangioma mm -hmm. because uh, not not every child has all the different letters of the syndrome, but every child does have a hemangioma. That's one of the definitions is a hemangioma plus at least one other uh, major um, manifestation, I guess. And so for us, the hemangioma was the big uh, treatment. And for most families, that's the thing that is the, the initial concern when they're born, um, when they're young, is treatment. And um, when when our daughter was a baby, the hemangioma was to make sure to, to try to um, kind of stifle the growth of it uh, and make sure that it didn't damage any other organs. So, for example, she had one near her ear canal, so they wanted to make sure it didn't uh, hurt her hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, today, the treatment that they use is totally different. There's new medication that they found that actually treats the hemangiomas uh, more effectively, and for many families, um, their children are, are on this medication for several years until they're um, out of the woods, you know, from any danger. Um, as Andrew said, some families, their children are born with um, pretty serious heart defects, and um, surgeries um, are commonplace as very, very young infants. Um, we also know that about a third of, of uh, people with face syndrome get get headaches to varying degrees. So our, our daughter's on the very severe end of the headache spectrum, but there's other uh, people with face who get um, headaches that are just, uh, that are more manageable. Um, and so, uh, so that's where we're at today. The first few years were um, very much focused on the treatment for her hemangiomas. Mm -hmm. And by the time she finished finished getting treated with that was about the time that she started getting the migraines. Okay. All right. And then, Andrew, um, I'll ask you right now, like, uh, how is uh, Rachel managing uh, these days with it? Well, well these days, <clears throat> whenever we have a, a nice weather front come in where it gets really hot or really cold or really rainy, there's a we typically manage headaches, so a lot of her Headaches are, are managed or are, are triggered by weather. Okay. And so our whole, a, a lot of our life is uh, looking at, well, is there a big cold front coming in or is there a big rain coming in? And then we could be, it's pretty predictable that our daughter will get a headache that week. And then all we do is, you know, manage the headache for four times a year over the past since, since Rachel was three years old. We have the the debilitating migraine. We can't migra We can't manage at home anymore. And you know, the ones that look like a stroke, we we pretty much have to take her to the ER. And she gets a special IV medicine that um, that, that helps helps, helps yeah. the migraine. Doesn't cure it, but it helps it. And okay. she okay. also um, is, takes other medication to try to prevent the, the migraine. So you know, a lot, a lot of our life is spent making sure she's taken care of and making sure she doesn't get headaches. Managing food intake. There's a lot of food triggers for headaches. We we manage that, and some of it's a little. She's not so happy about it. So we have to tell her our daughter does not eat a lot of chocolate, and she's gotten used to it. And she, uh, but it's it's not fun for her, I'm sure, when she sees all of her friends eating chocolate. But she's. But if you meet her, you wouldn't know that anything was going on. She is a. Yeah. Happy, otherwise healthy, yep. active ten-year-old. She does great at school. She mm -hmm. loves music and art and reading and movies and dance and um, she just roller skating. I mean, she does um, all the same things that other kids do. Uh, we just have a few extra um, worries at times and you know need to manage. Andrew said, think um, sweet. She takes medicine every day. 
which is not a big deal. And, um, you we know, have, we, we, have to, we, we have to be careful we, about sleep and making sure she goes to bed at a reasonable time, not get overtired. Right. So there's a lot of things like that that her friends don't have to manage as well, but we, we have to be fairly strict about managing to make sure. That to we, minimize the risk of a right. headache. Because if she goes to bed at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, pretty confident that half good chances she's going to have a headache yeah. the right. next day. Yeah. Because uh, lack of sleep can be a trigger for, for headaches as well. Um, but but we've met um, lots of face families um, <clears throat> in the United States, and uh, uh, every child you know has their has issues. With this, but these are happy happy kids who love living life and are just a joy to they're just a joy. One, one doctor described it to us uh, many years ago. He said, "If you look at her, the the images of her MRI in her brain." Mm -hmm you talk to that same person, they are two completely different people. They would not expect someone with that uh, vascular structure inside of their head and their brain to be the person they're talking to right now, meaning they would not expect them to function as they do now. So it's physically, physically, in particular. physically so our, our daughters, we, we, of course, don't forget. And a lot of the face families have the same issue where their vascular structure is just so odd to the doctors. They, they're just baffled how some of them, you know, how they, how they lead such normal lives when their vascular structure is so, what would be the word? Unusual. Unusual. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, that just attests to that Rachel truly is a miracle. You know, it's amazing. <laughs> it's nothing short of a miracle. Um, Janet, let me ask you this. Um, what was the inspiration for the face syndrome community? Uh, well, we um, we were fortunate that we have met some doctors who are very dedicated to finding out, you know, how face syndrome occurs, and have uh, really dedicated their careers to treating children <clears throat> with face, in addition to um, other medical. You know medical issues, mm -hmm. and uh, we, uh, one of the doctors in uh, at the uh, Children's Hospital of Wisconsin, Beth Drelay, um talked with us at a, a face family conference several years ago about. It was a trying, face family conference that she organized. Right, that she organized from the hospital um, to try to organize the families and provide an advocacy uh, opportunity, um, which could help bring. Research funding to the doctors who are it occurs, and uh, and so we um, we gathered the names of you know the contact information from all the families that were at this conference, and there were maybe twenty to thirty families, and um, we went home and said let you know let's try to organize something, and Andrew. Uh, just decided he's like we're going to make this happen, and he um, he organized about eight to ten families of children with face. Um, parents, uh, uh, right? The parents of children with face, um, a, a grandparent, and, uh, and a couple of the doctors who are leading experts in face, which is a nonprofit organization that is. 100% volunteer run by um, by the a board that's so a volunteer board again made up of parents um, mostly parents of children with face and we've recruited a couple friends to help serve as well a lawyer um, uh, uh, some other medical experts who are involved in face and we we organized this or created the organization about three years ago created in two th it was born in 2012. 2012. So it's, about, it's been about three and a half years. And today we have over 300 families from around the world who are connected online. Uh, and we provide awareness about face syndrome. We provide education to families who are going through um, the same things we went through 10 years ago, just trying to understand what, you know, what the future is like for their children, what the treatments are. Um, and in particular for families outside the United States where it's even less um, common or less understood. Less commonly diagnosed. Right, less commonly diagnosed that we can um, provide education that they can take to their doctors who don't know necessarily how to treat a child with face syndrome. So there's a very, very active 
Facebook community of parents and some and a, and a handful of adults. I think there's about three or four adults with face. Oh, oh no. No. I think there's probably people in our organization, some of whom or most of whom were not diagnosed until they were adults or in their late teens. And they've been a great support to um, the families of children and sharing their experiences. So we have, um, I think, over 300 people on the Facebook group right now. And, and literally, there's, there's, it's a very active group right now of, of parents asking questions. And every, uh, at least once a week, or I'd say almost at least once a week, at least once every couple of weeks, we have a new parent comes on. Hi, my name is so-and-so. My kid was just diagnosed with face syndrome. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, what do I do? And so, we, you know, there's some basic we give them we're not doctors so we always don't but a little experience this is what happened with my kid this is what they did to my kid uh, and, and these are the symptoms that are typically have to manage uh, yeah my kid had open heart surgery when I was you know, there's a lot of that conversation and it's a really good outlet for parents to find information and support day one so when Janet and I were told were told the word face syndrome in 2005 we went to the internet. We found nothing. We found a few uh, journal, medical journal article, articles, and that was it. Yeah. So, and and doc, doctors knew very little. They knew it was diagnosed, and the treatment, the treatment that that our daughter was given, and years ago or eleven years ago, is completely different than the treatment now. And the treatment now. Uh, for the hemangioma part of face syndrome is, is, is much, much more effective and, from what we understand, less harmful to the kids because the treatment used to be steroids, and steroids are obviously not a good thing for babies and young children to have, mm -hmm. and now it's not, the treatment is not steroids. It's, it's, another, it's another miracle drug for the, for the face families, at least. So, uh, so we provide a lot of support and, you know, even provide or give – parents advice on some questions that they can ask their doctors or uh, information that they can share with them. And, um, and this year, or in 2015, uh, the face syndrome community actually created our first medical advisory board, which is made up of, um, I think, eight, eight to ten experts who are uh, involved in either researching the cause of face or are leading uh, world leaders in the treatment of face. And they're all, um, since we're a U.S. based organization, the doctors are all um, based in North America. We have one doctor from Canada on our board, plus, uh, plus the rest from the United States. And they have been a huge support in helping to develop treatment protocols for, uh, for families um, and, and getting the word out about those treatment calls through their professional channels through their pathology or neurology and cardiology and we're thrilled that we're thrilled that we have these experts on our in our community working to um, uncover the questions that still remain and provide um, treatment better treatment options for our children and um, we uh, we put on our first family we put on the first family conference the, the, that face, was, syndrome, the face syndrome community Right, that was uh, sponsored by the face syndrome community in 2014, mm -hmm. and we are in the in the midst of planning our 2016 family conference. It's going to be held in Indianapolis, Indiana, and we're thrilled about that. It's going to be in June, and we are um, we just opened our registration at the first of January, and we already have about eight or ten families signed up to come. We're hoping that we will end up with 50 to 60 families coming from not just the United States, but from Canada and other countries coming in so that we can continue to support each other, learn about new treatments and uh, what the doctors are finding out through their research and just have a chance to spend time together and meet, meet people that we have met online but haven't met in person. It's, it's a wonderful group of families and the kids have a fabulous time um, uh, with each other getting to just having fun. They don't, they don't even... Talk about physicality. All of our kids know that they've known each other since they were babies because we've been going to these conferences since um, our well, daughter. Well, we went, Rachel was 18 months old the so first she, time she, we she, met other face she, families. She calls them her face friends. Yeah. And so she's going to probably know them the rest of her life because they all share something 
um, very, you know, share something very special that they all will have to manage for probably, you know, a long time. Yeah. Well, for, for the rest of their lives, we'll have to manage it. Okay. Okay, good. Um, one last question here for y'all. Um, what is the best methods of contact? Let's get some website information out. If someone's watching and they want to know more information and uh, specifically about the FACE Syndrome community and about the conference, uh, you know, coming up in 2016 or for future events, um, what's the best ways that they can learn more information about the FACE Syndrome? Our website is www.facesyndromecommunity.org and that's P-H-A-C-E, face syndrome community.org. Uh, we have all kinds of information on our website. Again, to help families, um, there's a link right on the, on the um, front page of the website to take you to the conference information. Okay. Um, okay. If, uh, to register, um, if anyone is interested in donating to help us put on our conference, we certainly would appreciate any donations. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Being an well, and we appreciate your support and your time. Um, there's lots of information on our website to to help people, and you can you can even Google Face and learn more as well. And, and on Facebook, there's a a, a group called uh, Face Syndrome Community Friends. So if you want to support our community, right. and you want to just hear a little tidbits about what's going on with Face, go to Facebook and just look for Face Syndrome Community Friends and. Uh, that's like, our public. Like our That's site. our public uh, Facebook page. And you can see all sorts of stuff going on with face syndrome. Perfect. Okay. Good. So we'll get that information on the screen just in case uh, at the end of our video blogs. So if uh, you grab a pen and paper, folks, uh, we'll have that on the screen momentarily. Well, um, guys, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate. This has been very insightful and. Um, I learned a lot, and um, you know it's just amazing. I hope a lot more people will uh, get more aware of what's going on with face syndrome. And I think you, I gotta commend you guys of uh, everything you're doing to get the uh, information out there for others. Thanks, Taryn. Thanks, Taryn. We appreciate you uh, interviewing us. Thanks. Well, the pleasure was all mine, and uh, I do want to say a couple more things before I let you go, if it's okay. i got to brag about you. Uh, Janet has just been tremendous. She's been doing her workouts and never complains. She's like the least <laughs> complaining client I've ever had. And Andrew is the only client I've had who's actually been a marathon runner. So they're both uh, extreme fitness gurus, folks. So you can take everything they said to the bank. And um, one more thing. Earlier in the video, I think we heard some screaming and meowing. That was not Rachel. I think that was either Max or Anna, their other two children. Yeah, Max the <laughs> cat. We're so, not <laughs> so, so Janet and Andrew and Rachel are cat people just like myself, and so that's how you know they're good people. So I hope, again, everyone uh, learned a lot, and uh, definitely check out and support and donate uh, to the face syndrome, everybody. So again, we'll let you go. Janet and Andrew, thank you so much again for your time, and uh, we'll see you guys soon for our next workout. Thanks, Thanks Darren. All right, folks, here comes the information one more time. All right, everybody, there you had it. That was the face syndrome community information right there. Hope you took it down. Definitely tell some people about it and also donate when you have the opportunity. So Janet and Andrew, wonderful interview there with you guys out here in the greater Atlanta area. Keep up the wonderful work. And again, like I mentioned in the video, Rachel is certainly a miracle. And everybody who's going through this too, I uh, hope that they can definitely reach out, connect with face syndrome community and learn more information about it because we've got to do that and create the awareness awareness and let people know about it today. So uh, also folks, thanks so much for watching today's video blog. That will wrap it up for episode 413. A few other things I could ask everybody out there to do. When you get the opportunity, check out the website link at the bottom of your screen, www.gotaren.tv and bookmark that as a favorite to your website today and tell two people about that website as well. Also, if you haven't done so yet, please make sure to like GoTaren on Facebook, subscribe to GoTaren on YouTube, follow GoTaren on Twitter, and that way you'll stay connected with Taren, the traveling trainer of GoTaren Personal Training, who always tells each and every one of you, it's your time, it's your investment, it's your life. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you on the next video blog, everybody. Bye-bye.